Hi everybody. How's everybody doing? Next one is called the Abbey Grange case. The Abbey Grange affair. Play case. The game is afoot. Not a word. Into your clothes and come. I'll wait for you in the sitting room. I've just received a note from Inspector Lestrade, a letter from the suburbs. He is in need of my presence. Whenever he has asked for my assistance, it has always turned out to be entirely justified. I fancy that every one of his cases has found its way into your collection. Uh, yes, they all seem worthy of... However, I regret your fatal habit of looking at everything from the point of view of a story instead of a scientific exercise. Oh, Holmes, you... I beg your pardon, I digress. It would be much better to examine this letter than to try to convince you. Holmes, why are you being so mean? I want to talk to Toby. Toby, Toby, Toby. The letter is on the table, Holmes. You should take a look. Okay. I agree with you, Toby, that Watson's shoe is preferable to Mrs. Hudson's cold cuts. The letter is on the table, Holmes. You should take a look. Okay. I can tell from Lestrade's handwriting that he was in a hurry when he wrote this letter. A wax seal with the monogram E.B. The Brackenstall family coat of arms. My dear Mr. Holmes, I should be very glad of your immediate assistance in what promises to be a most remarkable case. It is something quite in your line. Except for releasing the lady, I will see that everything is kept exactly as I found it. But I beg you not to lose an instant, as it is difficult to leave Sir Eustace there. 3.30 a.m. So, what is it, Holmes? Promising, as always, it appears to be a case of murder. So you believe that Sir Eustace is dead? I should say so. Lestrade wouldn't have sent for me for less. His writing shows considerable agitation, and he is not an emotional man. These people belong to high society. The quality of the writing paper, the EB monogram, their coat of arms. The crime was committed before midnight. Holmes, how can you possibly tell? Well, it is all thanks to Lestrade. He wrote his letter at 3.30 in the morning. Imagine the chain of events before that. The local police had to be called in. Scotland Yard was notified. Lestrade himself had to make haste there and finally compose the letter he sent to me. All of that makes for a fair night's work. It makes sense. Lestrade also speaks of the woman he released. That seems to indicate that she had been held somewhere during the crime. Much time has been wasted. Let us find a cab and go to Abbey Grange immediately. I live in hope of an interesting morning. Ah, Mr. Holmes and Dr. Watson, here you are. I'm very glad that you have come, but perhaps I should not have troubled you after all. And why is that? Lady Brackenstall has come to her senses, and she has given so clear an account of the affair that there is not much left for us to do. You remember that Lewisham gang of burglars? What, the three Randalls? Exactly. The father and two sons. It's their work. They stole a silver service, which is of great value. Sir Eustace Brackenstall is dead, then? Yes. His head was knocked in with his own poker. A violent act of aggression. Yes, the poor lady. She has had a most dreadful experience. She was assaulted and tied to a chair. But I think that you would best see her and hear her account of the facts. She's in the morning room with her maid, Teresa Wright. Where is the body of the deceased? In the dining room. 
We haven't touched anything. All right. I'm going to examine it. Very good, Watson. Lady Brackenstall awaits you in the morning room. Okay. Okay. These paintings. Who are these people? Sir Warthen Brackenstall. Oh, family. This one? No. This one? Lord Ramsay Brackenstall. Lord Ramsay. Baron Linden Brackenstall. Okay. Lady Brackenstall awaits you in the morning room. Lady Brackenstall awaits you in the morning room. Um, there's so many doors. I don't know which one. It's not my fault. Ladies, allow me to introduce myself. My name is Sherlock Holmes. I'm assisting Inspector Lestrade in this investigation. Mr. Holmes, I am the wife of Sir Eustace Brackenstall. We were married only a year ago. I am sorry for your loss. Please accept my deepest condolences. I suppose that it is no use my attempting to conceal that our marriage has not been a happy one. I fear that all would tell you that, even if I were to attempt to deny it. What happened, girl? Oh my gosh, she looks horrible. That Can you describe eye. to me the events of yesterday evening? Is it really necessary? I have already told Inspector Lestrade all that happened. Yes, madam, it is. I will tell you then. Sir Eustace retired about half past ten. I sat in this room until after eleven, absorbed in a book. Before I went upstairs, I entered the dining room to fetch a candle and... Oh God... Please, go on. As I approached the French window, I found myself face to face with an elderly, broad-shouldered man who had just stepped into the room. Close behind the first man, I saw two others. One of them struck me a savage blow with his fist and felled me unconscious to the ground. And then? When I came to myself, I found that they had secured me tightly to a dining room chair. It was at that instant my unfortunate husband entered the room. He fought with the intruders? Yes, I think he had heard them, for he was holding his stick. But they were three, and he eventually succumbed. One of them, the elder one, struck him a terrible blow with the poker. I fainted once more. When I opened my eyes, they had withdrawn. Then my brave Teresa came to my assistance. Did they take anything? Did these three villains steal anything? Yes. I found that they had taken the silver from the sideboard, but you can see for yourself in the dining room. Okay. Well, the bruise is very obvious. Was that one? How I gonna dress? Oh, oh, I thought that was like soot or something. Old bruises. Oh, it's from her husband, probably. You mentioned that your marriage was not a happy one. Was there anything specific that was troubling you? He was not a nice man when he was drunk, and he suffered from dark moods, but nothing else. Old bruises? What about those old bruises on your hand? The bruises on your hands are at least one week old. Your husband caused those bruises? Oh, do you? Yes, he did. He was very angry at the time. Out of control. Again. Sir Eustace was a drunkard. To be tied to such a man for life is worse than death. Your ladyship? Uh, let's talk to Teresa. Teresa, I would like to hear your testimony. Certainly, sir. 
As I sat by my bedroom window, I saw three men in the moonlight down by the lodge gate. But I thought nothing of it at the time. Oh, if I'd known. And then? I went to bed, and it was more than an hour after that I heard my mistress scream. And down I ran, to find her tied to the chair and him on the floor with his head smashed. That's all I know. See what that says. Huh? What a stain. Coffee stain. She's a hard worker. My mistress is very tired. Can't you allow her to her room? <gasps> Look at that painting of the puppy. All right. Uh, oh, what's this? Family business booming. The Randall gang is back on the street. Less than a fortnight ago, this infamous family of burglars, the Randalls, as they are known, made their reappearance by way of a brutal but successful intrusion into one of the healthier homes in um, Sydenham. The police are already on their trail, however, the details of the crime are being kept confidential, including that of the name of the victim. A witness was able to provide a, a precise description of all three men, and this will surely give the police a chance to complete their profile on this family of delinquents. We would take the liberty of reminding our esteemed readers about this highly dangerous band and to provide the full description that is available at the moment. The gang has been in Bain's business for some considerable time, being a family of three, a father and his two sons. The elder, Jack Randall, is a man in his 40s and already gray-haired while of average height and build. Being the mastermind behind the burglaries, he retains control over his two sons, both of whom are close in age but very different in appearance. The first son, William Randall, is tall and broad-shouldered with a small, disproportionate head. His younger brother, Melvin Randall, is of a somewhat weaker constitution and is as skinny as a rake. The gang is wanted not only for their frequent thefts and break-ins, but for the exceptionally brutal pirate career they enjoyed before returning to England. Be alert, and may your valuables stay safe. Okay, so there's three people. The description of the Randall gang provided by Lady Brackenstall is identical to the one in the Times article. Um, an older guy and... Two younger his sons, one who's bigger and one who's skinnier. Uh, let's see. The robbery was faked and the whole story invented in order to blame Sir Eustace's death on the, on the Randalls. The testimonies and evidence match and point to the Randall gang. Well, I don't know enough yet, so... I feel like... I just have the suspicion that Teresa, this girl, knows something else. I don't know. She she may or may not. Um. Picture. Oh. Oh. Hmm. These scratches are most definitely made by the picture frame. <gasps> oh. This is Sir Eustace's safe. There may be something important inside. I must ask Lady Brackenstall to open it. Lady Brackenstall, could you open this wall safe? No, it is my husband's safe. I do not know the combination. We have to open it. Your ladyship? Can't you pick lock it? Can't pick lock? Let us try to open this safe. Yeah, this it's safe up. can be cracked. I only have to pay attention. The dial will vibrate when it is set to the correct number. I remember back in high school, everyone tried to learn how to 
um, crack open these lockers because everyone needed one. I can't do it. I don't feel any votes. Sir, use this. Your current physical and mental state is of great concern. There are several signs of um, he hep hepatic, hepatic decompensation. The last time that we met, your eyes were bloodshot and your skin was tinged with yellow. There is a particular odor from your breath that is common in those suffering from liver damage. Then there are the lung abscesses that we have discussed. The leg cramps you have described to me are caused by a an alteration to the nervous system, which in turn is caused by an excess of alcohol. That includes, that includes the tremors. Your liver seemed excessively hard at the time of your examination, which is a sign of an evolving chirosis. There are also signs of ascites, fluid in the peritoneal cavity, which are evident with your swollen stomach. The pain beneath your left rib indicates a pancreatic malady, which may lead to fatal and fulminant pancreatitis. Pancreatitis. Your condition may pose a risk to others. Your excessive alcohol consumption lowers your self-control and heightens your aggression. I'm available to help you help you with this problem. There are a number of treatment problems. Options. Ugh, too many medical words in this document making me mess up my words. Antique coins, possibly of value, but they're scattered without care. It is common practice to keep one's valuables in a safe behind a painting. It should not really pose a challenge for a criminal. Maybe they're here for something else. Maybe they just took the silver just so they can take something and um, cover the fact that they're coming for something else. This photograph of Lady Brackenstall and her maid Teresa was taken at a port, but which one? Is there any indication? Adelaide. So the lady Australia. and her maid came from Australia a year and a half ago on this ship. Is this the dining room? The body is still in the dining room where the murder took place. Oh Jesus. Okay. This dining room? You should examine the body of Sir Eustace Brackenstall. That must smell bad, doesn't it? I mean they did say the murder took place like yesterday or something. Yes, mantelpiece. Oh. It appears that the bell rope was cut by someone taller than me. Wait, well, said I can do F. Oh. That's way high up. That's really high up. A fur trader's cabin. So, Watson, 
What have you learned from examining Sir Eustace's body? Well, I can confirm that the death was instant. Sir Eustace was facing his attacker when he received the blow to his head. There are no other apparent injuries. The head was cracked with the force of the blow. That must be the murder weapon. Quite a large stick, a formidable weapon. Barefoot, he had therefore been in bed and did not have time to fully dress. Okay, I think that's it. Dead body, um, the dead body of Sir Eustace Brackenstall with the fractured skull. Then the murder weapon. The death of Sir Eustace could have been due to a perco blow. Okay. I can still examine it. Alright. What else? It is covered in blood. Sir Eustace might have struck his head upon it while falling from the blow. That is one possible explanation. Mm. More clues? Uh, blood on the side. Blood on the side of the fireplace grate. Maybe he fell and hit his head? The death of Sir Eustace could have been due to his accidentally striking his head on a fireplace grate. Might be. Um, there was something with the mantelpiece. No, nothing else. Alright. A decanter standing next to the open bottle. An inseparable pair indeed. This glass has some wine traces, but no visible beeswing. There is beeswing at the bottom, as if the wine had not been decanted before being poured. This glass has some wine traces, but no visible beeswing. It is rather strange that only one of these glasses has dregs of beeswing inside it, while the other two are clear. What's beeswing? Is that a wine term? Why does wine need to be decanted? Maybe we're just not posh enough to know. Chateau Calon Segur, French wine, Grand Cru. Oh, thank God. He said the name. I didn't have to. I would have butchered it. Okay, let's see the glasses, the silver that was stolen. These wine bottles are expensive and mostly from France. This candlestick is valuable. It is interesting that it was not also stolen. An empty silverware box. It appears that the intruders have stolen the contents. Is there something else? Nothing? Really? No, there's something else. I definitely think they just took it. Just a, just for the sake of it. Not really taking it because they wanted to. Okay, where is the other thing? Where is it? This candles. Where is that?
A bottle of wine is missing here. The criminals did not thoroughly ransack the house. They only took a little silverware. Oh, there's the rope. Sailor's knot. That's interesting. This rope was handled by the murderers. We need a scent hound to follow their trail. I will take it with me. Toby. Okay, sailor's thoughts. The article did say the Randalls were pirates before. A glass with some wine and a large amount of pea's wing. Uh, two glasses with traces of decanted wine, but without pea's wing. There were three people drinking wine out of these glasses. One of the three probably prefers wine with beeswing. There were two people drinking wine of these glasses. The remaining glass with the beeswing consisted solely of the dregs from the other two glasses. Hmm. I still don't think I know enough yet to choose one or the other. So let's keep going. This is the chair that Lady Brackenstall was tied to. All right. Let's get Toby. Toby, 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 Toby. Where are you, boy? Okay, I didn't see um the mantle. This is where I keep my post. This is where. Oh, I thought it was gonna show me the article of the result from the last case, but I guess I passed the opportunity already. Come on, Toby. We need the best nose in the British Empire on this case. Oh. Toby, is he gonna follow me? You gonna follow me, boy? No. All right. Let's go back to Abbey Grange. Search, Toby. I'm playing as Toby. Oh my God, he's so cute. So cute. My dog can't do this. He just sniffs and sniffs. Never finds anything unless you like tell him where it is. Like it's it's right it's right there. It's literally right in front of your nose. He can't find anything. Can I run? I can! Look at those flappy ears! The intruders entered the shed for some reason when they were making off with the silverware. The best nose in the British Empire. No. Okay. Well, there's another trail. All right. Let's go. Speaking of, my dog is hiccuping. I don't know if you can hear that. Aww. 
The scent leads to the well. I should check it. Okay. Next. Onward. They really walked around. Did they hide something in the well? I think they did. <laughs> The intruder's trail is lost behind this wall. The criminals left the house through the French window. They walked to the shed, then across to the well, before fleeing by climbing over the wall. I wonder why they chose such a winding route. Uh, let's check shed. Well, this garden would be really, really pretty. They put tons of um, flowers in it. Nice space. All right. Bags of seed. Some empty bags were recently moved. This hook might be useful. Small gardening tools. Nothing of great interest. This old suitcase sounds hollow. It must be empty. There's something glittering at the bottom there, but how can I reach it? Silverware. This is hardly a coincidence. The Brackenstall coat of arms. It appears that we have found the stolen silverware. Why would they put it back? Maybe this one. Robbery is confirmed as a motive for the crime. The criminals may have plans to return for the silverware that they dumped. The robbery could have been imitated to explain Sir Eustace's death. The silverware was not supposed to be found. I think it's this one. I get the feeling the robbery was faked. That's what I think. Mm. Okay. Uh, let's look over here. No? All right. Brave Toby. The best nose in the British Empire. So cute. Uh, okay, let's go back and talk to the lady. Brackenhall, I think. Tell her about the silverware. Oh my god, I'm stuck. Okay. She looks really pale. There are three glasses on the dining room table. I was wondering if... Oh, I forgot. When I came to myself the first time, each of them had a glass in his hand. They might have been a father and his two sons. They talked together in whispers, and then they left. 
We found your silverware, Lady Brackenstall. It had not been taken very far. Is that true? I am very thankful to you, Mr. Holmes. Your ladyship? History of violence. Sir Eustace's doctor speaks of his violent behavior. Yes, Sir Eustace was an extremely violent man. A detestable human being, to be more precise. It is true that he once threw a decanter at me, and all because I dared to stand up to him in defense of my mistress. Sly devil. God forgive me that I should speak of him so now that he's dead. But a devil he was, if ever one walked the earth. We met him only 18 months ago. She'd only just arrived in London. Yes, it was her first voyage. She'd never been from home before. One her with his title and his money and his false London ways. If she made a mistake, she has paid for it, if ever a woman did. She doesn't have any friends here, so it was specially hard for her. We found your mistress's silverware. Oh, that's good news. You really are as clever as they say. Indeed. Mm. <sighs> Lady Brackenstall seldom went out after arriving in England. It was commonly known that she had no social life nor any close friends. Why did she come here? Lady Brackenstall married Sir Eustace shortly after arriving in England and remained at home during that time. There is little possibility that she or her maid are acquainted with anyone in the country. Or, Lady is acquainted with someone from the Rock of Gibraltar. Hmm. Hmm. She's never been from home before. Why did she come to London? With just her maid. I feel like she must have known someone. Or if, if not her, then at least her maid. You know? What else do I need to do? The hunting scene. A deer hunt. This door leads to the upstairs bedrooms. Apparently the criminals did not venture there. How come? Do I need to examine every single picture? A fur trader's cabin. Alright, let's do it. Did they leave any clues outside the fence? No. Oh, I need to perform analysis. All right. Okay. See if that lady's still there. I think she is. She's not leaving. Hey. Okay. Let us see how the rope was cut. The fibers at the end of the rope are smoothly cut. Let us try to find out what tool was used to cut the rope. The 
fibers from this cart appear to be different. The fibers from this cart appear to be different. If I cut the rope with a knife, it matches the original. Hmm. Knotted rope. Um, the bell rope on the chair was tied with a sailor's knot. Sharp rope. The bell rope was not torn, but cut with a knife as sharp as the type which sailors use. The rope was cut once with a sharp knife and tied quickly in sailor's knots. That could indicate that the intruder had a sailor's background. Okay. I'm missing something. Lord Brigham Brackenstall. Is it because I didn't examine all these pictures? Lord George Brackenstall. The Brackenstall family seems rather austere. What do you know about Sir Eustace, Inspector? What was his reputation? A charming man when sober, but an absolute demon when he was drunk. In such moments, he was apparently capable of anything. Why, once he splashed fuel on Lady Brackenstall's dog and set it alight. Another day, he threw a decanter of wine at Miss Wright's head. Hmm, the alcohol seemed to madden him. To the point that we were forced to intervene several times to avoid a scandal. Inspector, I have recovered the stolen silverware. You are a wizard, Mr. Holmes. And where is it? In the garden well. Excuse me? Unique, isn't it? Rather absurd. What is the point of stealing silverware and then throwing it down into a well? Perhaps it was used as a temporary hiding place. Or simply the thieves wanted to get rid of it. It is up to us to solve this mystery. Sir Eustace had a severe drinking problem. Once he set Lady Brackenstall's dog on fire. Another time he threw a decanter at Teresa. Sir Eustace Brackenstall assaulted his wife one week ago. Sir Eustace was violent towards his wife. We need to select these, don't I? Okay, well, I don't think there's anything Wait, really? It contradicts? Oh, I see. I see why it contradicts. It's because if it was fake, then that means the Randalls were never there. And it was someone else. That makes sense. Okay, so maybe the Randalls were never there. There was two people drinking, Teresa and Lady Brackenstall. Doesn't look like there's any blood on a poker stick, though. Why is that contradict? Sir Eustace was murdered by the one person who was visiting that night. It was he who tied up Lady Brackenstall. He was tall and strong. The person who was visiting that night was probably a sailor. Look for a sailor. Lady 
Lady Brackenstall, not quite 25, is from a wealthy Australian family. She's been married for a little more than a year. She has, in all probability, suffered physical violence over the course of the last fortnight. The lady lives a solitary lifestyle, seldom venturing outside. Teresa is very attached to her mistress and has known her for a considerable time. She is the only resident servant at the, Gabby, at the Abbey Grange, cooking for, serving, and nursing Lady Brackenstall. She would not hesitate to protect her in the event of any trouble. Um, that's the thing. Okay. Holmes, don't look at me like that. I don't know what to think about all this. <laughs> He's probably like, are you contributing? Do you have anything to contribute? Probably not. Um, oh, what a horrible thing to have happened. Please. Really? What? Why'd you go over here? Home stop. I love how he's just touching the window, trying to look useful. Maybe go back to, to see if the newspapers say anything about her trip on the ship. The Rock of Gibraltar, a bulk carrier from the Adelaide, Southampton, London line, uh, Cunard Building, James Street, London, has returned from a six-month voyage through India, New Zealand, and Australia. The ship brought to England Miss Mary Fraser, heirs of the Fraser family owning land and tin mines in Australia. This reportedly beautiful la young lady is presently engaged to Sir Eustace Brackenstall, one of the wealthiest gentlemen in Kent. What? Her name is Mary Fraser. Oh, Mary Brackenstall, I guess. Here it is. Land and tin mines. The shipping company, the Adelaide Southampton London Line, and its address. Interesting. It must be the place where they keep the records, including the one for the crew of the Rock of Gibraltar. I think that if you pretend you're from Scotland Yard, they'll give it to you without any problems. But I have another solution. I'll call in the specialist. Wiggins! Okay. Call from the window. Wiggins? Wiggins? Wiggins, could you come upstairs, please? At your service, Mr. Holmes. I need a register, my young friend. If you could borrow it, there will be half a guinea for every one of you. I need the crew list of the Rock of Gibraltar in 1893 and their current employment. I'm straight on it, Mr. Holmes. Do you really think they'll find it, Holmes? My secret police is better than the Yard in many ways. That's fast. Three hours later. Here it is, Mr. Holmes. But we can't take it back. It's too risky. Put it on the table. I'll take care of it. Good work, young Wiggins. I left it right on the table for you, sir. Aww. He's adorable. I never know which one's the table. They're all tables to me. Oh, jeez.
This list shows the senior officers of the Rock of Gibraltar, on which Lady Brackenstall and her maid made their voyage. Lady Brackenstall does not know anyone in England. This must mean that someone on this list is our mysterious visitor. And these are the lists of the senior officers of the Adelaide Southampton London Line ships. Let us find out who was in London upon November the 7th. I do not think that this sailor has any connection to the case. This officer was on a ship that sailed half a month ago. He wasn't in London at the time of the crime. I see. We're doing a process of elimination. All right. Oh, and so is he. This officer was on a ship that sailed half a month ago. He wasn't in London at the time of the crime. I do not think that this sailor has any connection to the case. Can't we cross him off? Okay. Next. Mr. Jack Crocker was in London upon the date of the crime, and he is due to depart in two days. Okay, next. Next. Uh, okay. I don't think it's him. This officer is still at sea, therefore he cannot be involved. Cross him out. Him too? This officer is still at sea, therefore he cannot be involved. Yep. Uh, so we're missing three, two names. Henry, Southworth, and Ernest. Uh, he's still at sea. This officer is still at sea, therefore he cannot be involved. This officer this is too. still at sea. Therefore, he cannot be involved. Captain Jack Crocker is our mysterious visitor. He was the only one around at the time of the murder. Okay. Let's go find him. This Crocker, do you think... It would be interesting to meet him. Our young friend should be able to find him. Hey, Wiggins. Wiggins, could you find a way to bring this Captain Crocker here to us? Here? Holmes, that could be dangerous. No problem, Mr. Holmes. Sometime later. Mr. Holmes, I was informed that you were looking for me, and I'd like to know why. Yes, it is important that we talk. You will soon understand why. You are acquainted with Lady Mary Brackenstall, are you not? Yes, I think I do remember her, from when I was first officer, but I still don't see... It seems your relationship went beyond that of mere passenger and first officer. How dare you? Indeed, how reckless a feeling is love, particularly if one is prepared to commit a murder in its name. Explain yourself this instant. You are aware that the murder made the headlines of the morning press. You read the newspaper report, but to your dismay, found it much fabricated. Once you learned that I wanted to see you, you came straight away. You needed to know what I had found. You... and what do you know? That evening, you were with Lady Brackenstall despite the danger. I'm not afraid, Mr. Holmes. Besides, all of this is just guesswork. You would be right if there was no evidence. What then?
hat. Oh, okay. Nice. Lady Brackenstall was tied to a chair on the night of the murder. And it was you who tied her up. You call that evidence? Yes, as she was tied with a sailor's knot. Your handiwork. So, it's a sailor who's done it. That proves nothing, Mr. Holmes. I'm not the only sailor in London right now. Your theory is flawed, anyway. On the night of the murder, I was aboard the Sharp. I was supervising the repair of a porthole. At night? It was an emergency. There was a leak. You can ask the ship's carpenter. He can confirm. I'm sure that he can. Perfect. In that case, we have nothing more to talk about. Good evening, gentlemen. Holmes, what should we do now? Would you like to check his alibi? No. There is no doubt that these men will testify in his favor, and there will be no way to check. So, what then? So, we must work with what we have. We have all the puzzle pieces. What? Now I understand why you dissected the bell rope. I'm supposed to solve the mystery with just this little Captain Crocker knows Lady Brackenstall but he may be lying about his occupation on the night of the murder Captain Crocker is the only sailor who was aboard the Rock of Gibraltar Gibraltar with Lady Brackenstall and her maid and who is currently in London Crocker is lying his involvement is clear he'd appeared as soon as he heard that I was looking for him thus signaling thus signaling his guilt Captain Crocker was aboard the Sharp on the night of the murder. He was not afraid to confront me. He had a confident demeanor. What? This is a really short case. Holy crap. Um. Okay. Let's see go over my evidence and character profiles. Um, an item of silverware extracted from the well in the Abbey Grange Garden. Meaning, the silverware was just stolen just so it can be made into like a robbery, fabricated into a robbery, but it's not because they didn't want it anyways. The address of Rock Gibraltar ship, ship owner, we can find the crew list there. Okay, so we talked to him, Crocker. The piece of bell rope that was used to tie Lady Brackensall to a chair. It may still have a scent of the intruders. Sailor's knot, chair, they left, they went to the shed, got an empty sack to put the silverware in, put it into the well, and then left. Two glasses with traces of decanted wine, but without beeswing, and the third glass with wine and a large amount of beeswing was found in the dining room. A medical report found inside the med morning room safe, which states that Sir Eustace Brackenstall endured poor health, poor health. He suffered an addiction to alcohol and a nervous disorder. There is a locked safe in the morning room at the Abbey Grange estate. It might contain some important information. So that was the medical report saying that he's essentially dying. Lady Brackenstall has old bruises on her hands. They are approximately one week old. 
There seems to be a robbery which turns into a murder. Lady Brackenstall was assaulted and tied to a chair. Sir Eustace Brackenstall, which tried to resist, is dead. His head was knocked in with his own poker. According to Lady Brackenstall's words, it was the Lewisham Bang of Burglars. Three Randalls. It couldn't have been a robbery. So they were never there. And they don't even know Lady Brackenstall. So why would they fake the, the robbery? You know, in her favor. Crocker is a fine man of the sea, aged in his 40s. He's a capable, honest man and well-educated despite not being very healthy. He was in haste and still he read the morning newspaper and cleaned his boots before heading out. Teresa is very attached to her mistress. Uh, she will not protect her in the event of any trouble. Lady Brackenstall from a wealthy Australian family. She's been married for a little more than a year. She has in all possibility suffered physical violence over the course of the last fortnight. Okay. I'd say there were three people. Lady Brackenstall, Teresa, and Crocker. Imitator robbery. The robbery was faked. I do believe the robbery was faked. Poker blow. It was someone taller than Holmes who cut the rope. What if? Are you not yet? Yeah, let's go with, let's try to see if it was Crocker. Does that mean Teresa wasn't in on it? Sir Eustace was murdered by one person who was visiting that night. The murderer is tall and agile and a high-ranking sailor. Arrest Captain Crocker. Jack Crocker is a murderer and you will bring him and his accomplice, Lady Brackenstall, to justice. The murder was committed in self-defense. Jack Crocker defend a woman against a violent and this that dipsomaniacal man. The mystery is solved, but you decide to keep it a secret. There's no need to inform the police. Why did he tie her up? I 
I feel like Lady Brackenstall was working with him. I think so. I think it's this. Okay. I'm gonna rest. Lady Brackenstall is probably tired of Sir Eustace. And... Just didn't want to be with him anymore. Because I definitely think the murder is um, fake. Not the murder, sorry, sorry. The robbery. Which meant that someone had, like, Lady Braxel had to have agreed to whoever tied her up. Um, to be tied up. Like, she agreed to it. So, I'm gonna do this. Yes. Let's see what happens. Wiggins, could you ask Mr. Crocker to come here again, please? Right away. Why did you make me come here again, Mr. Holmes? It is over. I know that it was you who killed Sir Eustace Brackenstall. What? I know because of the height at which the rope was cut. The knife used was a sea knife. The knots were sailor's knots. And not least, the sheer force that was put behind the killing blow. And because you are the only one who knows Lady Mary Brackenstall in London. And because you love her. It's true. It is time for you to tell us the whole truth. I admit that I loved Mary madly from the first day that I met her. But I never did come to visit her, for I believed that she was in a happy household. When I talked to her maid who told me everything, I was insane with rage. I was due to set sail for six months away. I wanted only to see her again. But it turned into a damnable nightmare when he barged in. He dared raise his hand to her. He! He was not even worthy of licking her boots. Oh, I regret nothing. I admit I killed the monster out of love for her. She will forgive me if she is able. Lady Brackenstall already forgave you. She said nothing. Mary! But that makes her an accomplice as well as her maid. It places her in danger yet again. Mr. Holmes. You would not have managed to protect her. Till I die, do you hear me? Here is a letter that sets everything clear. And it is the one that should be disclosed to the police. I am the only culprit. Mary had nothing to do with it. Now it is time to end this. Oh, am I fighting him? What am I doing? Oh. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> that was a very awkward quick time. You should have let me die. How can I live if Mary suffers? I am sorry, Captain Crocker. But there has been quite enough death in this case. Inspector, I give you Sir Eustace's killer. He tried his best to perform his own justice. Well, I'm not surprised. Yes, it was me. I confess. Here is a piece of evidence that can be used in court. Perfect. A case that went smoothly for once. The captain is the killer. How come this is green and all the other ones I've done was red? I don't know. Sir Eustace was murdered by Captain Drac Crocker, who was visiting Lady Brackenstall that night. They staged it as a robbery by the Randall gang. Crocker used his sea knife to cut the bell rope to tie the lady and then hid the silverware in the well. He committed a violent crime for which he deserves a condign punishment. Okay. Yes. Uh, 
93 people say the case is, solved the case the same way, and 34 people made the same moral choice. Oh, 34%. Interesting. Thanks so much for watching. I think I'm going to stop here. Um, what do you guys think? Do you think it was Crocker? Or do you think it was Randalls? I think it was Crocker. There's nothing that indicated the Randalls. There's nothing that indicated it was a robbery. I definitely think it was staged. Um, so I think I made the right choice. I was pretty, pretty clear in that one, even though it was a short case. But yeah, thank you for watching. I'll see you. Bye.